The man fished out a bullet from his backpack. He cut open the bullet and then poured out the gunpowder. Then he cut open another bullet in the same way. Gideon covered the gunpowder with a dead branch. He put his hand against the end of the bullet. Then he fixed it in place and hit it with a rock. The campfire that was started excited Gideon. He immediately blew the fire louder. Gideon took off his frouncing clothes. He proceeded to warm himself with soaking wine. Finally he poured the wine on the wound to disinfect it. The pain was so intense that Gideon shouted. Gideon tried to keep his enemies from hearing him. He rolled up his hat and stuffed it into his mouth. Then he rubbed the knife on his pants to make it sharper. Then Gideon took a deep breath. He plunged the dagger directly into the wound. A bullet is pried out of his arm, and the treatment wasn't over yet. Gideon then plunged the dagger into the campfire. Instantly the dagger was already burning hot. Gideon placed it on the wound while it was hot and ironed it. The instant heat caused the skin to contract dramatically to disinfect. After Gideon finished treating the wound with pain, he finally collapsed on the snow with exhaustion. However, Gideon knew that he could not stay any longer because his enemies had already found the place where he fell into the water. Soon his position would be discovered. Gideon picked up his clothes and fled deeper into the forest. He ran a short distance ahead and then followed the footprints back. He then ran up the right side for some distance. Gideon finally followed the same footprints as before and returned. He tried to confuse his enemies. Gideon swept away his footprints in time to escape. He finally decided to hide in a tree for shelter. Soon the enemy found the location of the campfire. Carver looked at the strange footprints on the ground. He couldn't tell which direction Gideon had gone. He could only ask the four killers to chase Gideon in for directions. Hope followed the footprints and found this place. He had a hunch that Gideon might be nearby. Hope didn't have to take more than a few steps. He saw a small amount of blood under a large tree, so he suspected that Gideon was hiding in the tree. He looked up to check, but Gideon and the tree had already pointed his dagger at him. Luckily, the branches blocked Pope's view. Gideon thought he was safe, but blood was dripping down his arm. This was noticed by Pope at a glance. Just as Pope looked up, Gideon dropped the dagger vertically from the tree. Pope died straight away. Gideon fell from the tree. He took Pope's gun and clothes and continued to run away. By the time Carver's group arrived, Pope was already dead. The killers saw the tragic scene. They also realized that Gideon was very powerful. Gideon found a house. He quietly took the family's horse, then he rested in the woods for a while. Carver's group was approaching Gideon. Gideon wasn't going to be caught by them easily. He used a branch to light a campfire in the forest. The smoke draws Carver and the killers closer. He hid in the shadows and watched until the night. Gideon planned to sneak up on them, but the sound of a loaded bullet ran out behind him. He raises his hands but doesn't intend to turn around. The killer whistles for his partner to come. Gideon immediately runs away. Carver fired but missed Gideon. He could only put three killers on alert. Gideon escaped deep into the forest and found a wild boar. He cut the rope and removed the trap and threw it in the snow. Then he sharpened a tree branch to make a trap. When the three killers arrived here, the horse's leg triggered the trap. The, the young killer was taken down, but Gideon didn't want to kill them. The killer were only wounded, but Carver put the killer out of his misery with one shot. He didn't want to leave a useless man behind. Gideon was on the run when a robber called him out, but he wasn't nervous at all. He also advised the robber not to do anything stupid. The robber said he didn't want to shoot him in the back. He told Gideon to turn around nicely, but the robber was in trouble. The robber raised his gun and aimed at Gideon's back. Gideon quietly pulls out the dagger in his pocket. He took advantage of the robber pulling the trigger. He turned around and hit the robber in the throat with the dagger. The robber died instantly. Gideon then rode the robber's horse away. He went to a railroad construction site. No one suspected Gideon. He tied the horse in a corner and ate food to fill his stomach. Gideon was about to leave but was stopped by the steward. The steward recognizes Gideon's horse. He thinks Gideon is the robber. He knocks Gideon out and puts him in the tent, but the guards were a bit stupid. Gideon deliberately provokes him with his words. The guard grabbed a knife and taught Gideon a lesson. He was kicked in the heart by Gideon. After Gideon kicked the guard unconscious, he cut the rope and put on his hat and escaped. By now, Carver, who was after him, had already found the place, and the steward also found that Gideon had escaped. Both groups were looking for Gideon. Gideon took advantage of the staggered tents. He successfully escaped and rode away. At night, Gideon was asleep. Gideon had a nightmare. In the dream, Gideon went back three years. It was the end of the Civil War. Gideon's identity was that of a northern general. He was ordered to interrogate Carver. When his men entered the house and searched, they didn't find Carver. They also did not notice the baby in the corner. The men simply reported that the house was empty. The general continued to question Carver's wife, who spat on him. The general angrily ordered his men to set fire to the granary. Carver saw that something was wrong. He ran straight to his door. Carver was a southern colonel. He had lived here with his wife and children since the end of the war. By now the fire had spread to the house. The wife knew that her youngest son was still in the room. She tried desperately to break free. The older son rushed into the fire with his mother, but the wife found her youngest son and couldn't open the window. 
Carver could only watch as his family was burned to death. The general watched the tragic scene. He also realized that he had committed a great sin. He volunteered to take off his uniform to apologize, but the tragedy was irreversible. Carver decided to kill Gideon to avenge the death of his wife and son. The killers passed through a desert. They saw a horse lying on the ground in the distance. The horse's entrails were scattered around the body. They thought it was an animal attack. The next moment, a man emerged from the horse's stomach. Gideon had taken the killer hostage. He forced Carver to get off the horse. Gideon told Carver to drop the gun, but Carver suddenly fired and killed the killer with a single shot. Gideon also had to kneel down and throw away the dagger, but Carver did not intend to kill Gideon. The pain of losing his wife and son three years ago, he wanted Gideon to make it up to him. He first knocked Gideon down with the handle of his gun, then Carver was about to shoot him. Gideon kicked him out, then he punched Carver in the face. Carver attacks Gideon's injured heart. Gideon grabs Carver and chokes him hard, finally unable to breathe. Carver is knocked down by Gideon. Gideon immediately used the dagger to stop Carver. Gideon could have killed Carver, but Gideon knew it was his own fault. He knocked Carver out and took away Carver's horse, and he left Carver with only a can of water and left. Gideon came to the edge of the desert. He saw the endless Gobi beach and prayed to God to bless it. Then he went deeper into the Gobi. The hot sun was baking the earth. Gideon was about to faint on the back of his horse. He couldn't see the end of the Gobi. Just when Gideon thought he was going to die here, a vendor was passing by. Gideon was about to exchange a bottle of spirits, but he saw saw Carver coming after him, so he traded his horse for a bullet and continued on his way. And Carver traded his precious water for a gun. There was only one bullet in the gun. Carver took the gun and started chasing Gideon. Both of them were lost because of the war. At this moment, there was no strength left in the chase. Gideon suddenly stopped and turned to give Carver a shot. Carver fell straight to the ground. Gideon took the gun from his hand and aimed at Carver. Carver told Gideon to shoot. Since his wife and son were killed by Gideon, he had no hope to live. Gideon knew it was his own fault. Even if he killed Carver, it wouldn't make him feel any less guilty. Gideon handed the gun to Carver. Although Carver could not forget the death of his family, but as a man, he did not want this kind of charity revenge finally chose to let go. At the same time, he also understood at this moment, Gideon is not the one who killed his wife and son, but the evil war. Gideon is nothing more than a war machine, and he is only one of the victims. The war is long over. Even if he killed Gideon, it would be useless. His wife and son would never come back to life. Carver chose to spare Gideon. The two men helped each other to stand up. They both forgave each other in their hearts. The war between the two of them was truly over. They walked together outside the Gobi. Gideon took the dagger off his belt and threw it on the beach. He was tired of killing, but the barrier between them was still there. They parted halfway and went their separate ways, even after the war was over. But the wounds of war never healed.